In this video, I'm going to talk to you about my experiences of the autopilot in the Polestar 2 compared to the autopilot I had in my Tesla Model S. So one of the things that I'm quite often asked based on the fact that I had a Tesla Model S before my Polestar 2 is about how well the autopilot works compared to the experiences I had with my Tesla Model S. So I think a couple of things to just kind of point out and clarify right at the start of this video is it's not called autopilot on the Polestar 2, it's called pilot assist. And I'm sure and I hope that there's been many changes and improvements to the Tesla uh, autopilot that I had on my Model S. And also my Model S didn't have um, the latest computers available. Uh, I did have the auto uh, lane changing and other kind of things. Uh, and again, things may have changed. So the reason for doing this video is basically people ask me quite often about it. So they've also asked me how I feel about my feelings compared to the Polestar 2 and my Tesla Model S in general. And I will do a separate video um, probably in early January when I've had the car for a year to kind of say, you know, whether I regret making the change or not. So I think the the key thing really for me in, in terms of the initial differences between the uh, Tesla Autopilot and the Pilot Assist in the Polestar is to try and remember that what Tesla are trying to do is obviously trying to move to that autonomous driving. I think the term autopilot is, is somewhat misleading. Whereas the the pilot assist is basically doing what it says on the tin really. It's assisting the pilot, the driver of the vehicle and it's a more conventional kind of cruise control and kind of, what's the word for it, you know, automatic management of acceleration and braking based on traffic and everything like that. It's not designed um, and doesn't want to be something that's going to drive you from A to B without any interaction. So in terms of general usage, um, both work uh, about the same. In my Model S, if you want to enable uh, autopilot, you have to kind of do a double tap uh, on the one of the stalks on the steering column was a dedicated um, stalk for cruise control and everything like that. On the Polestar 2, it's just activated by a button on the steering wheel. First, it goes into normal cruise control mode. You press it again and the auto or the, the pilot assist uh, functionality turns on. So in terms of ease of use, I would say the Polestar uh, is slightly better. But again, it wasn't that hard to, to use uh, the, the column. Um, and then in terms of the actual lane keeping, I would say they're both on a par. So both of them are designed to try and keep your vehicle in the uh, center lanes, typically on the motorway. You can, I have used it on A and B roads, but sometimes it can get a little bit confused if there's not a, a, a clear delimination between the edge and the middle of the road. I would say, in my experience, I don't use it that much on A and B roads, but I think I think the Tesla probably was slightly better um, at working out what it was doing on, on non-motorway roads. But at the same time, I think it was towards my end of uh, the Tesla ownership, the EU made some changes and there was limits to kind of the turning and stuff that could happen with the, the Tesla autopilot. And that definitely made things um, a lot worse. In terms of when you're actually enabling it, the only one thing that I think is a little bit odd on the Polestar is it's kind of weird when when it's enabled it, it has an icon that shows a, a picture of a hand on a steering wheel which I guess kind of makes sense but then when you're not holding it properly maybe with two hands or with, with the right kind of grip it then pick, flush up a, a picture of a steering wheel with two hands on, telling you to hold the steering wheel and then when you hold it again, it goes back to one hand. I kind of feel like it kind of should be the opposite way around, right? Is that it wants you to encourage you to have two hands on the wheel and if you've not got both hands on the wheel and you've not got the right grip, then it would should flash and do something with the one hand. In terms of the, 
the disengaging. It's, it's been a while, obviously, since I drove my Tez. I'm try, trying to think what happened um, with that. I think it used to kind of, if you had both your hands off, it would kind of do a little bit of a weird braking kind of thing. Uh, and obviously it would beep. And then if you didn't put your hands on, you basically get banned from using the autopilot for the rest of the drive. Kind of similar with the Polestar. You drive along, if you're not holding it properly, it will beep and get much, much louder and more aggressive at you. Uh, but doesn't slam on the brakes or anything and put you in any real danger. But then you can just re-enable it. It doesn't uh, chastise you for the fact that you weren't kind of paying attention. Uh, which is a good or a bad thing. Uh, I, I don't know. The, the Tesla definitely was better at recognising that you were holding the um, steering wheel, I feel, and, and was less kind of fussy about the fact that you'd re-engaged a full concentration on it. Whereas with the Polestar, I do find that you know, you can even have both hands on it and it starts moaning. You have to kind of grip and remind it that you definitely do have control. Um, in terms of its lane keeping on the motorway, I'd say they're both kind of level pegging. I found that um, both cars tend to, even though they're supposed to stay in the middle, they do tend to favor one side, you know, one side of the white line better than others. Um, but the technology is um, similar. So on the Polestar and the Tesla, you've got uh, obviously the cameras at the front and radar. Uh, both cars have the cameras uh, on the sides and things. I don't. I, I think the, um, the Tesla may have been using those side cameras. I don't think the Polestar does. Um, and obviously the Tesla also is using the the bumper sensors as well the ultrasonics not sure if the polestar does but in terms of their actual performance um i would say the polestar is slightly better when it's using uh, pilot assist in my opinion based on when i was doing it for the only reason that i think both cars performed well they accelerated and decelerated well worked really well in traffic like any car with the, the adaptive cruise control that's the word i was looking for earlier uh, the steering does work well uh, the reason why I think the, the Pilot Assist has the edge is it's less fussy and I've never ever had any kind of phantom braking or anything like that happen. When I used to use the Autopilot in the Tesla, I actually stopped using it for a fair while because it, it made me feel like I was a learner driver whereas it was kind of constantly braking and then unbraking and sometimes you'd go under a, a gantry or a bridge and it would really slam on the brakes and people need flying the back of you and stuff so I kind of lost kind of faith in it uh, a little bit but um, the Polestar doesn't have any of the the summon features that the autopilot functionality has where you can be obviously parked in a, in a tight space and you can get to move forwards or back in, in the parking space as well as that that more or the newer feature where you know I think in the US it's very limited in the US, you could summon it to your position. You don't have anything like that on the Polestar 2. I don't think you probably uh, ever will. I think one of the things with Polestar, uh, obviously being partly owned by Volvo, is they're very, very, very safety conscious. So they're not going to do anything that they think is going to put people at risk or anything. And when I did use that function uh, in my Tesla, it didn't work very well most of the time. The app would lock up. Things didn't work properly or anything like that. Um, so I only used it for gimmicks. I don't know. And please, if you are a Tesla owner and you use this function regularly and that would be a showstopper for you getting any other car, I'd be interested to know in the comments. But for most of the time, I just thought it was a bit of a gimmick. So I think that's it, really. Uh, if there's any other questions you have about it, please leave down in the comments and I can come back to you. But overall, for me personally, in terms of how I like to drive and when I want to have an autopilot pilot assist type feature which is generally on the motorway I personally prefer that in the Polestar 2 just for the fact that I've not had any issues where um, it's tried to kill me <laughs> yeah, basically and, and slammed on the brakes and kind of done any weird maneuvers I know some people um, have mentioned in the Polestar owner groups. It's not so much related, I think, to the uh, pilot assist and, and cruise function. There's obviously other things, same with the Tesla, that's going on to constantly try and keep you safe. And I think they have had situations where there's, there's a function that obviously tries to keep you in lane. 
uh, and if and there have been situations I think where people have kind of thrown them into the opposite um, side or swerved for something that perhaps it wasn't really there because the sensor thought there was something. I've never had that, those issues, so again, this is specific um, to my user experience. But I really like that the Pilot Assist had no issues with it um, to date, uh, and there's not been a single time from an autopilot perspective that I've wished I had the Tesla uh, again. The overtaking function. Um, I, I, probably, I did use it because I had it, but it wasn't something that I would have paid extra for. Uh, and in some ways it's a little bit gimmicky because obviously if you're driving, you're gonna move over anyway. And actually the Polestar 2 does a really good job of that. So when you indicate to change lane, it straight away starts to uh, increase the acceleration to give you that overtaking speed to pull out uh, and does a, a great job of maintaining your spacing in the traffic and you know, slowing you down and keeping you safe. No, no issues. Um, whatsoever so hope it kind of helps just a short video just to answer that question so me personally prefer the Polestar 2 pilot assist um, only because of, of the phantom braking thing that I used to have on the Tesla maybe they fixed it I mean from what I read Tesla making still great leaps in trying to have the autonomous driving thing so I think that would um, be very important the, the main reason I guess just to finish on why I was never that bothered uh, about the autopilot. I think it'd be a nice feature to have in the future. I still think Tesla must be way off, specifically as a UK driver. I always you know, remember that if you were on autopilot, just kind of messing around, if you come up to a street, it's quite common in the UK with parked cars on the side of the road, it will brake and doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know to go round the traffic. It thinks it's stuck. In traffic uh, and obviously I've driven in the US quite a few times and it's a very different kind of environment so I do think that it's probably likely that uh, autopilot can and will be made available um, in the US more more freely but I think over here in the UK it's gonna be a, a long time I think until it, it can navigate all the weird nuances uh, of UK driving I don't just mean roundabouts and stuff like that I mean parked cars, strange intersections, one ways and stuff like that. Um, and that is one thing that I know with the original Model S uh, autopilot system, they had the mobile, it's called Mobile Eye, the stuff that would recognize signs and everything. And then Tesla didn't want to pay for that anymore. So they integrated their own version. And that was a bit of hit and miss recognizing speed restrictions and speed signs and stuff like that. The Polestar is, is quite similar to that. They have made some improvements, I think, in some of the latest software updates but I can never trust this speed recognition. The amount of times that you know it thinks it's in a 30, but it's not, it's in a 60. I don't know why it doesn't rely on the sat-nav GPS data to back up what the camera's reading on the signs. It definitely has got better, but again, it's still not something I rely on. If I look down and it says I'm in a 30, I don't know if I'm in a 30 or a 40. I don't know when it last correctly read um, the relevant sign, but. There we go, more Polestar videos to come. But uh, yeah, whether you're a Polestar 2 owner or a Tesla owner, whether that be Model 3, Model S, Model X, uh, Model Y even now, of course, let me know in the description, or in the, in the comments, uh, what you think about how the autopilot performs and how the pilot assist works in the Polestar 2 as well. Be interesting to hear from you. And obviously other viewers can hear from other owners to see you know, what they think. I'd also be interested if you've owned both as well, like I have. What do you think was better and why? Thanks very much for watching the video. Please like it. If you have another content on this channel, please consider subscribing and pressing the bell notification icon to get made aware of future updates. That's it for now. Take care until the next video. Bye for now.